Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, professional photographers of Idaho and beyond. I think we are uh, streaming live here to the YouTubes. Yeah. And uh, we've got a, I've got a few extra tricks up my sleeve. So if we crash and burn, it's all my fault. But our bandwidth jumped up. You know, as soon as we went wow, off the static cam. So. That's impressive. Good okay. morning, everybody. Yeah. So it's Friday. It's been a great, busy, fun, interesting, ex kind of eclectic. I don't know. Okay. What, give Eclect me a oh, eclectic. That's eclectic. A good, yeah. Yeah. Uh, week. week. It's mm -hmm. kind of like the static electricity all running behind me. Yeah. Let's see what that. Oh, that's not for me. Okay. <laughs> Um, oh man, so um, we've got a great topic today and I'm just gonna cut back to that after I shut that sound off. We're gonna come back and just uh, prime the topic a little bit. Just uh, man, that was quick and this is a conversation that we're gonna have today about um, maybe a little bit about how to get quick well, and, and that perception yeah. that you've done something quickly and um, and some of the problem, there's some problems that go along with the the client perceiving that what yeah. you did was quick. Yeah, and all of huge problems. Huge right? problem, like, because they're looking at the the dollars, right? <laughs> right? They're looking at the dollars, and you're going, "Wow, that was a great session." Yeah, like, what I, do you mean it's only thirteen. I minutes? did uh, yeah. that job at Mass Mutual a few weeks ago. You called it a mini sessions, and and I wouldn't call it that, but it but it kind of <laughs> is that. So um, it's a hundred bucks a head, right? And the guy literally was in front of the camera. We made maybe maybe one, maybe two images. He was in front of the camera for maybe 30 seconds, and he's like, well, that was a quick 100 bucks. I'm like, yep. <laughs> yeah. But we're gonna Wait, come back to that in just a minute. So I've, the camera people don't know out there, but we've actually done this show before the show, because we <laughs> Yeah, we just had this whole conversation. You yeah. got here early today. I did. And I, I, I love that. I was ready. So, you were ready. Yeah. I, I was ready for I, you. I didn't have a bunch of crap to do this morning like I normally do. You actually, you got here looking more relaxed than you normally do. Oh, dude, so I finished it. <laughs> so you weren't on the phone doing tech? No, well, just, I, I had, my day starts early like everybody knows. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, I finished this morning at 7.30 wow. on, on the phone, so that was good, and then I had one small job to do, push that through, and then literally, I went out and uh, I picked some uh, blueberries out of my blueberry plants and had those for breakfast. And, wow. Yeah. Got I had to coffee and I, so I did coffee as well. Yeah, so and I'm going to do coffee again after this. Yeah. I, I have I'm on deadline for a job yeah, this afternoon yeah. and uh, I need to push that out. And you've been busy. Uh, I had <laughs> and so just so my the rest of my week uh, I I was stretched on Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. You were getting your learn on. I was. I had and uh, and working and working yeah. and uh, yeah. So and supporting PPI because we had a board meeting board and meeting. board yep. discussions through Slack. So I, I recorded most of the 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 uh, learn on that I, it's glitch from Shutterfest. Uh, there's a three day uh, conference basically without the conference and it's not Zoom. It's live. So it's kind of funny how they. You know, we have issues here, right? I mean, <laughs> and, and it's not Bob's fault. It's not, it, it's, uh, I, I don't want to say that And at by all. issues, he means sometimes the signal just leaves. And, yeah, and yeah. So or batteries die or lights shut off or whatever. Yeah, we've remedied so this a is, whole lot of that. Yeah, so this is a national live conference and they had some problems. So it's not a, it's not, a, when you do live stuff. Well, and, and the nature of that is such that there's so many things that we can't control. Like right. we've affected the batteries. Everything's on straight up plugged in power now, right? Yeah. So we don't have those problems anymore. And then- Most well, power goes out. <laughs> so, but that, again, <laughs> but that goes beyond my ability to control right, that, right? Right, right, right? So same thing with these shows like uh, Glitch, Shutterfest, all that. They, they had a, they had a, twice that I saw, um, they're feeding audio out of, so each presenter brought their own laptop, right? And they're feeding audio out of those laptops, mm -hmm. right? So connections and the volume on the laptop wasn't that me. Yeah, blah, blah, That's blah. frustrating because yeah, there's so, no way to normalize yeah. all of that. So I did three days of glitch with some top notch uh, instructors and it was awesome. And you've just been working your tail off pretty yeah. much, which is good. Look at uh, the see smile. The smile? Yeah. See there the should smile. be a gold do the diamond. <laughs> yeah, yeah, cha ching. Um, yeah. We've, <laughs> I, and I, I would love to One talk about this. Billion dollars. Um, Four years. I've been repeating the same message for four years with anybody that would listen. And this year, I've hit the payoff for that. Yeah, it's awesome. It's pretty awesome. It's neat. Um, it's just awesome I'm, to see. I'm at, I'm at the stage right now, and this is the first time. So folks, there is, I guess the, 
purpose of saying all this, it sounds braggadocious, and I don't mean it that way. Mm -hmm. the, my point with, with telling you this is that there is light at the end of that tunnel if you get your message right and you're consistent and just keep doing what you're doing. Just yeah. keep pushing, keep pushing. Keep and that's pushing. that's part of this. We've got a word in here that yeah. we both really resonate with that we're going to talk about today. So we, we put out, we use Trello for our communication for yeah. the lives. And we and there's a board out there that has each live has its own with a card. Card, yeah. And on the card, we, we put bullet points down. Yeah. And Bob said, so he, a few days ago, he said, hey, live board's up. Uh, hit up with uh, comments um, or bullet points and I went there and I'm reading down through them and I hit the fifth one I went well pfft, that's, that's the whole the, conversation that's the bullet point right there yeah. so it's yeah. pretty awesome we got a good show today it's very so, neat yeah. um, so before we get to the show let me come back to um, this as our preview um, we're going to talk about fall retreat a little bit so yeah. I'm going to put up a slide this is your time to grab a piece of pen a piece of pen and <laughs> grab a piece of paper and a pen you know what to do. <laughs> live. Um, so live. fall retreat coming up live. September 24th through the 26th down in uh, Tetonia. Mm -hmm. And I love the name of this place that I've never been to. <laughs> <laughs> so so one, is, one of the things that we sat around as a board and we're trying to figure out after the uh, 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 actual Teton trip got uh, wiped out from us, you know, what we actually wanted to do with the retreat and, and where we could go, et cetera, et cetera. And um, one of our board members, who shall not be named but standing right next to me, <laughs> said, That was subtle. <laughs> said, uh, you know, I'd like to go to some of these towns that I've never heard of, you know, so I... We, I just didn't want to go to another tourist destination. Right, so this is, this I want is to not do something different. exactly a tourist destination, although it kind of is. So Tetonia is right over the hill from, well, it's a pretty big hill, but it's right over the hill from mountain. Uh, <laughs> it is the mountain from uh, Hoback <laughs> Junction, uh, and it's yeah, and uh, it's on the Idaho side. So all those pictures you see with the Tetons that are going the wrong way, well, those are shot from the Idaho side, um, and we're gonna have a ball. Tetons going the wrong well, way. The top of that what? thing, that top of that thing, kind of curls. To, if you're looking at it from the Teton, it curls to the left to right. Okay. Uh, from the Idaho side, it's right to left. So there's that. So anyway, we're gonna have a good time. I just learned something. Yeah, the, the uh, I probably won't remember that. You'll remember. It. So uh, <laughs> listen, we got it, it's great. But if you haven't got your, uh, you want to throw that slide back up? Sure, I'm ready. If you oh. haven't got your res registrations yet, uh, especially for the venue, you need to do that now. It says on here, book rooms by July 30th, and this isn't a drop dead date, but they no. anticipate that their resort is going to- Sell out. Yeah, sell out, book up. And and we they're not holding rooms for us. Right. But right now, there are plenty of rooms available and probably will be till probably mid-October, or I'm mid sorry, August. August. Yeah, so uh, if you haven't jumped out there, if you haven't called them, you call them and they'll call you back. You leave a message and they'll call you back and they tell them you're with, uh, Professional Photographers of Idaho, they'll give you the rate. Uh, but what's exciting about this is that they have RV spaces, they have cabins, I, they have yurts, they got all kinds of stuff out there that I you can rent. I had to photograph a yurt one time. That's not an easy interior. Well, no, because you don't it's have- It's round. It's round, yeah. <laughs> so uh, make sure, if you're gonna go, to make sure and tie up that lodging because it yeah. won't, uh, it's not gonna last forever. I think I'm gonna drag my travel trailer out there. I am too. I think yeah. that just sounds yeah. like fun. Um, I'm hoping. And, there, and there are there are dry camping uh, spots yep. and there are full hookups. Yep. So if you want a full hookup, I think it's 90 a night. If you want dry camping, it's 65. I'm just gonna 60. go for the hookups and enjoy myself. I am too, because yeah. you know why why mess with the toilet and all that stuff when you yeah. you know, get back home, you just yep. dump it while Good you're stuff. out there. So um, that's so way too I, much information. I want it to, I, it's a ton of stuff, right? But I, I know that, um, that our viewers are are wanting to know more about it. And we've got some really great stuff. Yep. I know we're in talks with Craig Lemire to come out and do some uh, portrait lighting. I think that's gonna involve models and horses because we've got Cary Grant and uh, Carrie's Kim. Gonna, Carrie's gonna bring her horses. Carrie, so horses, like, they're, they're gonna teach us yeah. how to work with horses. So a couple- I have always wanted to know how to do that safely. Did you go to the Stanley when No, nope. okay. I wasn't so, able to. So I did with, uh, what was his name? Um, Strickland, Terry Strickland. Mm -hmm. Yeah, great, great program. But one of the biggest questions I had, you know, horses are- Huge. Huge. <laughs> Humans are usually not so huge. Not so huge. one that, one of that, for a portrait setting, you don't really, 
want to shoot up. You know, that's kind of a not a good deal. And I was kind of asking Terry about, you know, working with horses and humans and how do you get, you know, and his answer was basically, um, you know, you look for something for either the human to stand on or a horse to go down into a depression or oh, something like that. Yeah. But I think this but is But I want to know how to talk to the horse. Exactly. And this is going to be something totally different than what that conversation was, but it's going to be kind of the same because it'll be working with horses and humans. Yeah, that's, in just, a, in a, and that's just brilliant. To top it all off, it will be with lighting with Craig, we hope. With Craig Lemire, yeah. And probably during one of the d most difficult parts of the day to perform this with lighting. Which is the whole point of but, going yeah. there and trying something so different, right? If you guys haven't ever tried to light somebody at noon or one or three, <laughs> uh, just go ahead, try it. Yeah. Uh, and you'll see it's just a hope little for Hope for smoke. <laughs> Lots of, like uh, Wendover. Lots yeah. of smoke. Yeah. All right, so let's move on because yeah. we're, we're cooking along yeah. pretty yeah. good here. We're about uh, uh, 11 after. But let's just do one more thing. Sure. Fall retreat. Make sure and do it. September 24th, 25th, 26th. Uh, a couple of us going down early. Yep. So if you want to uh, hang out early. Uh, we're in a caravan. I we, feel that. I do too. And the uh, uh, other thing too is if you want to stay later, the, the venue is open to you booking past the venue stay. That's awesome. So if you want to stay for a couple of days and go to the Tetons and I don't shoot think over there. my life will allow that. No. I didn't say wife. Life. I think my life's too busy right now to yeah, allow that. But pretty, yeah. Yeah. All right. So the next thing I want to hit real quick, I wanted to do this at the beginning instead of the end. If you're here watching us, you found us on YouTube, I want you to smash that subscribe button and I want you to hit the bell so that you get notifications of when we come on. We will be adding more and more content to this channel over the next course of time, maybe the next uh, several months, year, that kind of thing. Um, some of the workshops that we've got planned coming up, we're going to we're going to be recording and once we get some of that material edited we're going to be adding that to the website or to the youtube channel as well so subscribe for us and um make sure you hit the notifications so yep. you can find out when we're here um then well, the last hello michael collins just uh popped up on the uh, old yeah chat. he said work 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 that's when you're saying how busy i am yeah and um i am i am just absolutely delighted to be as busy as i am this is the first first time in in almost 10 years that I have bookings, well, so we're in July, so I've got August, September, October, December, and January bookings. Nice. And uh, I've never been booked five months out before. I'm, I'm stoked. It's, yeah. it's so good, it's so good for the business because it builds stability into the financials and all of that. No, and, just, uh, it's a way It's up. really good. It's, it's a way to share. It's big. Us, yeah. All right, so um, I'm gonna come back to this graphic, right? And uh, we'll introduce our topic again and come right to it. Um, man, that was quick. <laughs> Right, which doesn't describe our lives. No. Because <laughs> <laughs> we like to chat. Um, so I'm going to start with this anecdote, and I kind of I led into it a little bit earlier. Um, I, I, we photographed 50 some odd people uh, over two days for a big company here in town this week, and one of the guys came in, and by the time he got into my seat and I photographed him, we made one portrait, and I'm like, dude, this is fantastic, you're good. And he's like, I'm done. I'm like, yep. He goes, man, that was quick. And my response is, you know, I'm trying to be witty. Yeah, one 125th of a second. Um, but I say that because it introduces this concept of moment of capture. And this is a phrase that I need to have in mind as I, as I talk about these things because <laughs> it wasn't quick. He came in, um, I, I've got a person who does all the logistics, okay? This person comes in, we get a model release. This, uh, it's my wife that does this part of the work. The model release answers questions and kind of primes them for what's next. She, that person gets handed off, the subject gets handed off to uh, my gal that um, her sole job is to touch this person and make them camera ready. She starts with a lint roller. She does, we've got collar devices that we can install into collars to make them stand up in different shapes. Um, if we need to print the tie, if we're going to uh, do some hair fixes, we have a whole kit that has various different hair treatments. If we need to stiffen it or soften it, we've got a, that's her job, right? Mm -hmm. She'll spend a moment or two or three with this person getting them ready for the camera. She hands them off to uh, my grip assistant and my grip assistant um, ushers them onto set, pre-poses them, basically points to where the camera is, swing your knees this way or that way, and um, I literally fire off a mugshot with their model release with their name on it so I get name and face in the same photo. 
That goes back to my grip assistant. He ferries that over to me while I'm communicating the person. And I'm almost always I'll go up, I'll make a couple of, of wardrobe adjustments, and then I go make a capture. The capture, the pop with the lights and the shutter runs, is super brief. The one one twenty. And I don't need 30 images of this person because all of those steps along the way have primed him for the moment he gets his photograph taken. Yeah. Yeah. I so, man, that was quick. Well, it was a perception of quick, right? It goes back to that guy over at Mass Mutual. He says, well, that was a quick hundred bucks. Well, if you say so. Yeah. Right? I've only been studying this for 35 years. <laughs> exactly. Right? Yeah. Um, the, the quick part, and we, again, we discussed this before, but the, the, the quick part is the pushing of the shutter. And... Um, <laughs> You it's know, the easiest damn thing that I do. Yeah, so the, <laughs> I use a but, remote for it. But all of the prep that Bob just went through can be translated easy to everything you do out there. So I like to shoot outside. I particularly like to shoot people outside. But I've done it for 15 years. So right. I, I know. I, I was telling Bob. So this, there's things you know. I, yeah, I was telling Bob this morning. You know, if I go, this if I, good. if I go out there on a bright sunny day, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to be at one uh, uh, ISO 100, one two hundredth of a second, five six, and my light's going to be on half power, and the sun's going to be behind him. And that's where you're going to start. And that's where I'm starting. Um, I get teased a little bit because I develop like rich formulas for my clients so that my work is repeatable. But folks, you know this too. You go out and you're going to make that photograph for that person out in the sun. That there wouldn't be a sunny 16 rule. Right. It, it, yeah. Right. Yeah. That's a formula too. And we <clears> all, you may not realize that you're formula based, or you may not be there yet. Right. Maybe you have to adjust your way well, into well, it. Well, I think I, I think I've I've told this story a long time ago. When I started, <clears throat> I had a tag hanging from a yeah. modifier. Yeah, we talked about that. That said that said if you're ten feet away, put the light on this power, shoot these settings. Yep. If you're twenty feet away, which that that throw that out. If you're five <laughs> if you're five feet away Just inverse square law means your light sucks, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> if you're five feet away, this is the setting. I used to have that on every single modifier. I had square modifiers, I had soft because boxes, I had so you, but that, you taught yourself that and then after that, a while you're like, I don't need that tag. I know yeah. I've got to start here. Well the tags fell off. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, I don't know what to do. Yeah, yeah, no. But that but that's part of, and, and we were talking about landscape photographers. What do you do if you're land well, I can tell you what you do because they used to do this and most of you have. You get up at four o'clock in the morning, right, to go get that sunrise shot. Um, so what's what's the night before? You're charging batteries, you're emptying yeah. cards, you're cleaning yeah. lenses, you're doing whatever to get ready because when that alarm goes off at three, because you got to be there at four, uh, that's a short night. You know, you got to sleep double time to get six hours of sleep in. So it's the preparation, and then and then usually you're putting your stuff on your back, and you're hiking for a mile to whatever. Pre prep's a big deal. You plunk down the tripod, you you know drag out a candy bar, get some energy, and you <laughs> set everything up, and you pretty much already know what you're going to expose for, depending on what you see. But you you know that, so your expertise or your the stuff you do, get every day, or the stuff you do for practice works into just, and, well, and, and, we, and when you elevate your game like you yeah, have, yeah, well, now different factors come in. I use the same lenses, I use the same cameras, I use the same, I, I, because of the composite work that you do, so for those of you that don't know, Bob does, he'll take uh, probably, I would call him uh, three quarter shots probably. Yeah, they're about, they're about mid calf. Yeah, and, and he'll composite, so like for example, XYZ company wants a, uh, you know, well, while he's taking headshots, he might do this three-quarter thing. Then he comes back, he doesn't group them all together then, he comes back and sews them all together in post. But if someone, if one of those people leaves, then it's pretty simple, he follows the same formula. Turn off the layer. Yeah. And, <laughs> Photograph and, the and new person. And it throws the other one in. Now, of course, you have to manipulate that with uh, shading and all kinds of stuff. But um, it's all about his doing, I, we were talking about this too, my window for I guess you'd call it sloppiness. My window for um, what'd you variability call it? Yeah, is about this wide. Yeah. His is about this wide. That's because so, I have a very narrow focus. Exactly. Right. So um, so Jen, Jen says something here. I assume that's Jen, even though it says Adrian, but I think it's Jen. Uh, she says, I think people understand that concept with doctors. The actual time with the doctor can be short, but it costs more because of their expertise 
They have staff. They have equipment. They have. They got medical school. They've got <laughs> student loan debt, right? Um, well, I know an attorney who's been out of lawyer school for a lot of years and still has like half a mil in student loan debt. And this isn't a conversation about that, but you wonder why that person's expensive because they went to school for a long time and they're still trying to pay for it, right? Yeah. There's an investment up front. Um, and that lends itself into some of what we've got here. I talked about moment of capture. We talked about that too. Um, I, will, I wanna make sure we hit this yeah. uh, towards the end here. Don't forget that one. No, I don't wanna forget that. <coughs> Pardon me. Um, the doctor's thing, it's years of education, years of study, it's years of internship, which is practice, right? Um, if, you, if you go to a teaching hospital, you might be working with a fellow that's a person who's trying to pick up expertise in a specific area, working under the, the, the tutelage of another expert. Folks, oh my gosh, I was just having a conversation about this expert thing yesterday with Jennifer and, and Kim. Just, I, I've got a peer in the photography industry who's struggling so hard, but she won't come into the fold mm -hmm. of PPI and find professional peers, find a mentor, find expertise that you can tap into, right? But that's part of, that's part of my moment of capture. All those things leading up to my moment of capture. It's my 35 years behind a camera. It's my working at night, working at the day, working in great light, working with terrible light, working with every element of it builds that experience level. So, and, and I, to tack onto that, you know, there's an old, the more you practice this stuff, what, whatever gear you have and whatever you, yeah. you do. We're gonna talk more, about gear here in a minute too. Yeah, but the more you practice, which involves going out, in, in my case, finding models, doing fun little shoots, whatever. Mostly, I'm gonna, I'm mostly. gonna say this, and this is a little bit maybe contrary, and I don't intend it to be. Don't yes. practice garbage. Don't practice garbage. Because you, you, you practice crap, you'll be a crap master. I'm gonna disagree with that. Well, if, if you are looking to just get a bunch of shots in camera, no. And fix it in post. That's what I'm saying. So right. That's what. That's, that's not what you're saying. Correct. And so I, I just wanted to call that out. You want to practice the things, and get good at the things that make a difference, instead of just going out and shooting, whatever, and hoping for some good stuff. But you don't learn about whatever if you never shoot it. I'm not saying don't push the envelope. What are you saying? I'm saying. Don't just practice willy-nilly, have a plan. And the other side of practice is documenting or comprehending what it is that you've done to get the effect. You're like, that, oh, great picture. Jeez, I wonder if I could do that again. Yeah, now that I agree. The second part of that I wholeheart wholeheartedly agree with. Uh, this is what makes this great, by the way. We don't, we're not from the same like cookie cutter. <laughs> yeah, no, no, we're definitely not. So, um, I anyway, think we're saying the same thing. We are, it's it just that if, if you don't go out Here's my deal. If you can't have fun with your camera, don't pick it up. Oh no, I, I agree with that all, all, all the way. Okay, so yep. if you go out to shoot, like we're gonna go out next to, in Tetonia you, you, and shoot something you weird. You gave me that experience. Yes, Down a dirt road. That's right. Photographing tiny little birds. When in I our, drove the blind, I drove blind. That was crazy, right? Exactly. So yeah. I, don't, I don't shoot birds at, as a matter of business, but we went out and we did not we had fun, but I was really shooting with some technique in mind. I know I need to get close. I know I need to try and fill the frame or at least bring some good composition into that. I know I need to find uh, the bird that's in some light so he's not just part of the background. You know, there's a lot of stuff going Ca on. Catch light, you know. There's always a bunch of crap yeah. going on, yeah. right? So anyway, <laughs> the, the deal was though, now let's just say that the result of that shoot was you want to be a bird photographer. Right. I mean, just just say that. Yeah. Okay. I okay. Say I'm that. Just, I'm, we're I'm not gonna. We're not gonna say that. I'm rolling like, with yeah, it. Okay. Good. <laughs> so now, in that case, now, oh, God, I really enjoyed shooting birds. I really did. But now, Bob has a good idea. My my equipment was. He's got top notch equipment, but the equipment was limited because why? I didn't have the reach he needed. I didn't have the lens. Uh, right. So, but that's what the second point of Bob's. He he went on to say, learn from what you do. Yeah. Right. And so, in my case to light somebody outdoors, uh, and especially with varying skin tones, you know, 
pay attention, you know. So, so it is. it's not just to go out there. Here, I'm going to agree with you now. <laughs> it's, not, it's not just to go out and just pop a few shots. Oh, it's geez. actually go out and learn something that you need that you're going That's to That's useful need. to yeah. you. And it might not be useful right at the moment, but it could be useful down the road. That I guess that was my point. So, you know, Bob's headshot photographer, if I was a headshot photographer, I'd sit and do the same thing he does, play with lighting player, do all this stuff, but it'd be in a confined space. So you, you, know, you know who I watch on, on YouTube? Peter Hurley. Yeah, a little bit. Okay. I've, I've actually been in his cl classes and workshops, and he's great, and I do follow some of his stuff. Shebang. Um, <laughs> right? Um, uh, I follow headshot photographers, Gary Hughes and, and Boo Ray Perry and yeah, some other, other folks that, too. yeah. yeah. Um, so I'm trying to surround myself that, with the folks so that do what I do because I want to do what I do better. There's another, to get to this point where somebody so says, talking, man, that was fast. Yeah, we're talking about expertise and that's a... That oh, was that's a, the word. Yeah. I, yeah that's oh, yeah. the word, right? So, yeah, so we were going down through these bullet points, and I, I walk in this morning. And I said, "This word and this fifth bullet point is it," and we just, I just blurted it out without any. Uh, you did, I didn't like drum roll yeah, or anything. Yeah, no, nothing. <laughs> but th but that's part of the deal is, I don't and and everybody says, and I agree with this. I can't use an image that thirty people are shooting. I can't use it. Yep. Okay, I get that part, but that's part of getting the expertise. That's correct. You probably can't use that image. So for 30, me, 30, uh, well, hang on. You can't get the. <laughs> you he says, hang on. You go get to talk right now. Right. I'm talking. I'm right talking. Now. <laughs> That's part of the expertise. You can't use that shot. I, I have got a chit ton. Oh, he said a bad word. I, I have a lot of shots that I can't use. Okay. <laughs> damn it, Larry. Yeah. Damn it, Jim. <laughs> I'm a doctor. Um, so, but I try. What I take away from that session, any session is I say, okay, I like that lighting pattern. I like what it does. I'm gonna try and recreate sure. it. And I go out, get my own There's model. real merit in that, right? Exactly. So it's, it's, so don't discount taking that shot that 30 other people are taking. It, so the only problem I have with that is that I want to then tweak the moment to get the shot that I want. You know what I mean? Yeah, I understand. So anyway, yeah. um, I, you know, there's merit in all of that. Um, but, but what we're really talking about here is expertise and practice, 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 yeah. and do what you've got to do to get to be where you... So the saying from one of my old bosses, sometimes you got to do what you don't want to do to get to be where you want to be. I love that. Oh my gosh, that uh, is absolutely yeah. true. So, and my, my old boss was a she. I loved her dearly. Um, she was probably one of the, the best bosses I've ever had. So. Uh, that's just a takeaway. Doesn't mean anything other than the fact of that saying that she had, and she didn't talk me into a lot of stuff, but she reminded me that if I didn't take this assignment, sometimes you got to do what you don't want to do to get to be. To get where to you work. Well, so I, I've got teenage boys entering the workforce, and my mantra with them is make yourself useful. If you're tasked with doing something that's menial, do it, do it well. Mm -hmm. And what that represents is an opportunity to do more things. Sometimes you have to do things you don't want to do. To, to get to be where get you want to be. To be where you want to be, right? So yeah. that's good. Let's see what it is. A professional can reproduce the shot. Yeah, I absolutely agree with that, right? Um, part of that is looking at the shot and, and breaking it apart in the head and doing all of those things. But the second part of that is is that you got to get there. To, to your point, remember what you do. You're, you yeah. took that picture that 30 other people took, right? Yeah. But, but the reason why, I'll tell you, when I first started going to these things, the first thing, I, I'm like, geez, you know, you got somebody's head in the background and uh, everybody puts out that, oh, this is a signature shot. Well, no, it's not. You're on an instructor-led <laughs> course, it's, you know. But, but what I wanted to do was capture, as a matter of fact, most of my stuff is behind the scenes. Yeah. I capture positions of light. I capture the position of the photographer. I capture what the heck they're using. I, I, I do mean, that yeah. and I have a Trello board for that so that is literally what I do 
for each of my commercial yeah. clients. And that's what I so, capture the process so, that I've used with them. I document that process so that I can come back to it, Mike, and repeat it. Right. right. And pay, so and pay attention to those professionals. So guess how they got to be where they're at by doing stuff they didn't want to do. Exactly. <laughs> so that comes right down here to this fourth point, right? Yes. Yep. Tons of time spent honing the process. Yeah. So if I do if I do A and I continue to do A, the only likely outcome is that I'm going to get better at doing A. And that's the process of honing um, and it, and folks, this isn't just the photography. I think no. um, one of the things we as creatives get really wrapped up in is how I'm going to light it and how I'm going to run the camera. And but you know, you can walk into that situation. You you have a, an idea of what your camera settings are going to be, what your light power settings need to be. Great piece of cake, right? But it's also about how how do you onboard the client? How do you prep the client? Um, how do you communicate with the client? I, I booked There's, I booked yesterday's uh, city council member through Facebook Messenger. That is not my preferred method of booking clients. But you just but hit, it's, it, it, but it's where he's at. But you just hit it. It's all your processes, right? It's yeah. not it's not the camera push. It's not the little yeah dunk and right? it's done. <laughs> it's it's all of the processes. And, you and I do that with a remote, so they don't even see me get behind the camera, right? Yeah. So the button push just happens in my hand, but. It's it's all about your expertise, and that's what, when we hit that when I hit that word in that fifth point, I was just like, you know what, that's it. And it, it's I you know again worked with enough models. I have a I have a model app uh, release on my phone. But likewise, you know, I so I like click, I take their picture, and yep. their picture is attached to the dang thing. And so uh, there's two things about that. A I get their name and their email address usually. Uh, I don't usually do phone numbers, but their Facebook or Instagram. I get their cell phone number so that I can text them. I, I, do, I, I don't do that. And the re it, I, t well, I'll take it back. I do it with models <laughs> I've worked with previous, okay. but I don't do it with new models. I don't. That's because you don't want to be creepy. Exactly. Yeah. So, um, my clients almost universally, and this is actually an interesting thing, from the millennial generation out through Gen Z now, they feel email is antiquated. Yeah, it is. And because email has a the, that proliferation of spam and junk, they just don't even go there at all. Yeah. So a lot of the corporations that I'm working with, a lot of my clients that I'm working with right now, the new people they've onboarded post post pandemic, they're in. I'm texting with somebody, and she's on vacation in Atlanta. Yeah. And we're setting up the shoot to come in August. Like. Yeah. Fine, you want I, that if that's what it is. I, but I, I've honed that process. So the most important part of that communication is that I take that communication and drop it onto my Tarla board because that's where my my process lives is on that Trello card. And I don't care. I know people love to use spreadsheets and however they, you're documenting your process. What, your CRM, whatever your CRM tool is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. And so whether it's 17 hats or Tave, there's a lot of great ways to do this. Yeah. We just happen to find Trello works really well for us. Um, and this isn't about Trello, but it's the, the better we hone that process, the better, and my, so my wife has gotten really good at looking for specific things in the Trello board, and she catches me sometimes. <laughs> I'm like, hey, I don't see that invoice information in Trello. Because I'm, I'm like, all right, this is what I, I need you to invoice so and so. It's gonna, you're actually gonna send it to, to this person, the other person's gonna pay it, and we're gonna get it through a third party. Right, that's all got to be documented, or it, or it just falls apart. Yeah, it goes away. Yeah. And um, but she keeps me on that, and I keep her on that. And you know, those kinds of systems are only as good as the data that you put into them, right? Yeah. Um, so I we talked about that, and I want to I want to hit this one, and we disagree a little bit on this, and I think it's well, I don't think we do necessarily. Okay. I, I I think we, I think I, the the uh, the disagreement comes in. Uh, we've always preached that if you're if you have a camera, you can do this. Use what you have. Yeah. So and, we, and I love the concept of use what you have. Yeah. And that applies. What's the best camera you have with you? The one that's on you. Yeah, right. Yeah. So I use my cell phone all the time yeah. for taking pictures of my kids and my wife. And that's the camera in my pocket, right? Um, but I'm going to say this. Even the equipment contributes to the process of man that was fast, okay? And I say that because the right equipment 
some of it's very specialized to what I do, but having that right equipment used with expertise gets that job done well. And so I'm gonna back that up with shifty kit, shifty gear, shifty equipment causes problems and it creates pain points, okay? So I might say, here's a great example. Gordon was having focus issues with his camera. And we spent time talking on the phone, trying to sort out those focus issues, ultimately resulting in him getting the camera repaired because he couldn't count on that camera to nail focus. And guess what you have to do? Yeah. You have to nail focus, right? So if you've got a piece of kit that's shifty or unreliable, that is going to cause you pain. It's gonna cause you a pain point. It's gonna cause a pinch somewhere in your process. And then for me, this whole process of getting to the point where my client has a, so if we're shooting business people, they're, they're dashing into a conference room between meetings, right? Or on their lunch break, I am now the guy that's causing them to miss their lunch break. That sucks, that's a lousy position to be in, right? It's not the boss who told them to go get the headshot, it's the SOB with the camera who thinks I need a headshot. Like, so, your, like your guys take lunch anyway. So he comes in, <laughs> this guy comes in, right? And three minutes later, he's out the door, we've got the headshot in the can, and we're solid. So I think, I think part of that is like, uh, so, and we talked about this earlier too, again, if I go outside, and take a picture of anybody in varying light conditions, I really don't care if I'm using my AD300 Pro or just my AD200 that's not a Pro. Those, I don't care about that. Because, because, and right. those two have two different color uh, <laughs> spectrums on them, right? Yeah. But I don't care. Uh, Bob, on the other hand, does care. And for good reason, because he's got those composites that everybody's in same thing and he, you don't want to do a bunch of work gotta be super consistent. It, you just have to be consistent so so somebody's going to come in well I can't afford pro photo and so uh, I Canon R5 I have an answer a, to that hang on and an <laughs> <laughs> I'm waiting I, man I can't afford it I can't Let afford it out there. I, I don't have those I don't have any of that stuff either right. I, I got a 5D Mark III I got two of them I have a uh, I use uh, Godox gear uh, and I, but I do use Canon lens, the lenses, and I and I have a, a Sigma lens. So with that's that's all mixed up, right? And if I kept that kit as it is, I could do reproducible work like Bob does. But as soon as soon as I change out that Sigma lens for something else, then all of a sudden that the color ver that, changes. that variable changes. And if you see where I'm going here, so. It does matter, the kit does matter, if you have to do absolute reproducible work time in, time out. Yeah, even, but, and, but, and it does, but so let's, let's uh, say this, L hold on, let's, let's talk, hold on. Okay. <laughs> right <laughs> along for a minute. You're on a family shoot, mm -hmm. okay? Maybe you bust out your 24 to 70, which is a primo lens, and, um, you're going to use that to shoot the 40 people in, on the shoot, right? Okay. And that's, so, you know, because maybe you need to get a little wide. Yeah. Cool. But now you throw on that other brand, 100 to 500 or the 16 to 500, you know what I mean? That yeah. consumer lens the, the, that covers uh, everything. The one you buy out of the back of the magazine. To do all the close-up work with. And now yeah. your that, family portraits. Yeah. I, don't match. So you're yeah. going to hang those on a, you're going to sell artwork to this no. person to hang that on their wall. I, I would never do that. So in well, that, in that but, context. But that's my point. Yeah. Right. That that's the whole point of the kit can, I, so yeah. there's a lot of talking heads on YouTube that say the kit doesn't matter. Your camera doesn't matter. Yeah. I say hogwash. It does matter. Yeah. I'm going to say use the best equipment you can afford. And if you find yourself falling into a niche, falling into a specialty, falling in love with a certain type of photography, place your emphasis on being thoughtful about the equipment you use and purchase. Yeah, and I'm not, and I, I agree with that. And I'm down, and here it is, I'm down from seven lenses in my EF system to three in my RF system. Yeah. I've got one more lens to buy. I will, I will say this in the, uh, Vanessa Joy was one of the people I watched over the, over the three days, and she, so, <clears throat> There's an ongoing dialogue between Bob and I about primes versus zooms. 
as uh, there should uh, be, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah. And uh, as, as and she any and good she, camera nerd would. Yeah, and she's she's a prime girl. She's she's never she doesn't shoot anything but primes, except for the new EF twenty eight to seventy. She was all over that thing for three hours. That's the F two. Yeah. Yeah, that's crazy. So anyway, uh, I digress, but I agree with your point uh, on that, and I'm I think that we're saying the same thing. I would never do the. Uh, what would it be? What were those lenses that you can like clip on to cell phones and take professional photos with that. this thirty-five dollar clip-on lens? Yeah, yeah. Right? So it's it's you're right, uh, and and the camera does make a difference. I mean, regardless, it of what makes they, a difference. Well, it does to the process, right? Uh, so if you're if you're in, for example, uh, you, well, you're uh, who was this playing inside the gym? Your son was playing uh, volleyball, but it was outside of sand volleyball, right? Mm-hmm. Long time ago, I shot my daughter playing uh, uh, in concerts. She played the clarinet, okay? So you're in the same thing as a gym. There's no light, right? Yeah. So especially in a public school, right. there's really no light. So you go in and shoot, and if your camera can't go up to ISO 10,000 or so, 10.6 maybe, um, you're dragging the shutter. Sorry. So and you're you and you're getting blurry hands. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, th- or so there. That's a, that's an obvious. What instrument did she play? Clarinet. Okay. Yeah. There. Not a lot of fast moving going on there. So you can drag a little bit. Well, but. the problem the problem was is the conductors out there, you know, and you're taking this wide, and everything is all blurry. So it's like. Laquita's you know. here. Which is hello, guys. Welcome. <laughs> she says I'm late to the show today. Happy Friday. Happy Friday, Laquita. Yeah. I'm glad you're here. Me too. Yep. So. We can move on because I agree with what Bob's it, saying. It's just it's, a matter of... But if you don't start with the equipment you got, you'll never... I'm, but I'm going to rephrase that. Okay. Okay? You already did. I like that, the way you put it. Okay. Yeah. Um, I'm just going to say that avoid the pain points. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. And, and um, if you have flaky equipment, flaky equipment can create those pain points. I, I will so say... So eliminating those pain points is one way that I get to man that was fast. I, I will say one more thing. The deal about, yeah, I know, the deal about, <laughs> we got to get going. But the deal, okay. the deal, I got more to say. Okay. <laughs> and Laquita just got here. Okay. So she didn't want us to So end. the deal about shooting the same thing that 30 other people are shooting. I can't tell you the amount of times I've heard, what camera is that? What flash is that? What softbox is that? Yeah. What, what, that cord. That's because we love gear. Yeah. But, well, no, what they're, tr- what they're, what most of the people are doing is, I'm gonna go home and buy that camera. I'm gonna buy that cord. And I'm gonna buy that softbox. Buy my expo yeah, disc. Yeah, right. and, and then <laughs> boom, I'm gonna be able to shoot the exact same thing as this guy. Right. Well, no, you're not. Maybe not. Yeah, but you might be able to. But don't do that. If you're gonna, <laughs> if you're gonna do, if you're gonna do the thirty. Uh, Larry, I just ordered people. more lighting equipment last well, night. <laughs> listen, we order. I just bought a, I just bought an LED light for my video, but that's neither here nor there. So yeah, we're. I've heavy on a, gear. I've got a fleet yeah. of new lighting coming. So, but don't do that scenario. That's why I say, well, I, I shoot pullbacks. Uh, and it's not just for me to see what the crowd is. Where are the lights? Uh, he's using a long lens. Why? He's using XYZ body. Is there a reason for that? It, does it go, does it, you know, what is it? Is it full frame? Is it uh, APS-C? What is it? Does it go up to... A million ISO. <laughs> what, what you know? What what is it about it that makes him capture this? And then certainly, I don't go out and take a picture that I've shot right next to somebody else and say, "Well, oh, all right." Look so at this. So can I pick your brain on something for a minute? Sure. So and folks, I would love to have you brain. chime in on this. What is an appropriate response to the person who says, "Man, that was a quick hundred bucks," or "Man, that was quick." And the undertone in that is, I'm not getting what I'm paying for right. because you didn't take enough time. What's, what do you tell that person? How, Mike, what's your response in that scenario? Because I know you've got the quickness too, right? Jennifer, what's your response in that? Because I know you've got the quickness. How do you handle that? It's almost an objection. Oh, it is an objection. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, I, as a matter, so tell I, me. Yeah. I. <coughs> You know, uh, uh, it's short of just saying nicely. You know, I've done this for twenty-five years. Yeah. And uh, and 
it, yeah, that one one twenty one one twenty fifth. <laughs> you like that? Is you're is, right? That is, was quick. quick. One one hundred and twenty fifth yeah. of a second. If we take but, five more pictures, we but, might almost get a second worth of photography. Exactly. But I spent twenty five years getting here. Getting to the point where yeah. I could press the shutter once and get the result yeah. that I wanted. Yeah. And and just ask him. You know, if I were you, I'm not in your shoes because I don't do the headshots that are that are repeatable, like that. But I would if somebody said that to me and it was a headshot thing, I would say. I, I don't know, you know, I'd ask them what was wrong. Is there, you know, do you think, is there, did I shoot so, it wrong? So you're or? saying you'd call them out? A little. Yeah, a little bit. So I like, mean, a bit uh, nice, nicely, like, I'd say. How long should that have taken? Or no, I would say, you know, did you want more of your collar showing? We can redo that. Or, or, you know, did you not like, it? how about the teeth? Did you want, did you want to smile and not smile? We can redo yeah. that. I would say so, so nicely. A lot of times if, well, cause I shoot tethered. So I'm always showing the client, always showing that person what the image looks like before they leave the room. They approve their headshot before we leave, right? Um, sometimes they're like, great. You I'm like, is there anything that we could do differently? Is there something that you'd like to change? Would, you know, yeah, perfect. Uh, you want to smile bigger? You want to smile less? You want to show less teeth? Show more teeth? You know, um, I had a gal the other day. She was, she was uh, most people have a forehead. I've got a five head. <laughs> right? Because she has, you know, I don't know why they call it a widow's peak or whatever. Yeah. She's like, can you do anything about what it? call it? A widow's, widow's peak? peak? Never heard. Is that what that is? I don't know. Am I wrong? Anyway, we're going to go over here. Mike Collins. Well, Laquita says, tell them you've perfected your craft over many years. That's solid. Maybe sounds a little conceited. Mike Collins, you made it easy for me. There we go. Oh, that's there good. Go. Yeah. Or I take three or four just to make them happy. If you're not happy with your image, please let me know. You know, I do that. Run the shutter a few more. Why don't you have a seat? I want to try a couple more yeah. things. Click, 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 click. Great. I'm still using the first one because yeah. that was great, right? You could say our favorite Bob Quick saying. Let me introduce you to professional <laughs> photography. I haven't heard from Bob Quick in a while. I'm due to reach out you know, to him. He, I saw him on something the other day. So he's, they're still Yeah, I know uh, Mary Louise was at a at an event doing some uh, sales of their uh, their children's sessions and whatnot. I've, I've been following her on social separately from Bob. Um, Mike Collins, another suggestion. I don't want to waste your time. That's huge. So yeah. in, in a lot of the, the formats that I'm in. Especially your business. I'd be like, you know what? We spent a lot of time to get this right so that when you came in, I'm not wasting yeah, your time. Yeah. I love that, Mike. I'm going to use that. I spent the time before you got here, so, so I'm not wasting your time wearing your front yep. of my camera. Yeah. <gasps> yeah. I'm going to have to rewatch this. I'm going to have and, to watch this afterwards so I can write that down <laughs> and just I'm going to stick it to my forehead when I sleep so that I can get it by osmosis or whatever. Why don't you text it to you? You should text it to me. Okay. Somebody text that to me. <laughs> You've got my cell phone number. Everybody has my number. So, and, and if you're a if you're a outdoor guy like me uh, and, and we're dealing with people that say, man, that was quick, you know. Um, you know, landscapes continuously change. Lighting outside continuously yeah. changes. You, you can easily say, you know, I had to get that fast because the light is completely gone. And you won't be wrong. I mean, the it go for those of you who do sunsets, sunrises. I mean, that stuff. It's it happens in the blink of an eye, so to speak. It's so, fast. Yeah. yeah you know, so for me, when we do um, when we do some of the architectural work that we do, um, we're shooting twilights, and it's yeah. 15 minutes. And I'll run, I'll set two cameras from different angles, and I'll run, I'll run the, the radio trigger in my hot shoe on one camera that triggers the other camera when I take the picture. So I'm taking two sets of pictures at once because you only get 15 minutes tops yeah. to make those images work, do you, right? Do you ever do uh, like a plus two, zero, minus two? Bracket them. You bracket oh them. yeah, you, no, you have you, to. So yeah. on, uh, on, well, every one on my 5D4, yeah, so it's a, it's a, a, a bracket of five. Yeah. I run the bracket of five and. Oh, you're a big spender. Well, you know what? It's digital, right? Yeah, that's right. It's okay. Yeah. Um, so let's see. I'm going to come back over here. Laquita. Excellent, Mike. Yeah, I agree with that. Uh, Jen, she's now saved the day seasonings. You've been all over the place today. <laughs> no, Jen says, I don't get that comment much because I spend time with them in an in-person consultation and show them all that goes into a session yeah. and my work. So one of the things that we had, I was doing a lot of listening in the background this week because my team was taking care of so much of my work for me and the things that I heard people saying walking in the door and, or walking out the door were so encouraging. Um, 
they walk in the door and like, well, I have a big crew. I'm like, okay, there's, day one we had five of us because I hired Andrew to take behind the scenes work um, because I need that for my own marketing. And that's maybe another topic about how you can use behind the scenes in your own marketing to show people what you do, right? Um, but Jen, you're absolutely right. That in-person consultation where you've talked about your qualifications, I don't get that. Like, I don't have yeah. that opportunity with people. Um, so that, so that's a, that brings us back to another thing. Uh, you do talk about it, you just don't know it. You don't actually physically talk about it, but it's in your portfolio. It's demonstrated in yeah. the portfolio. And right. so, so everybody that comes in, like, like especially on my wedding business, you know, and that was going full board. I mean, they all look at the bridal pictures and go, "I want that." I want that. And, and it's not, it's not. Gee, I think the light could be a little bit better here. <laughs> it was, "I want that." Yeah. And so. Uh, and as long as they know that doesn't happen by chance. Yeah. If you've, if yeah, <laughs> one yes. of my favorite yeah. things is I, I was working with a group last week. Idaho Education News came through the studio for composites, and um, they just had headshots and group images done Whoops. recently. And uh, they've had a little bit of staff turnover, so they were thinking, but I was talking to the CEO, and she's like, they were crap. We didn't pay enough. Yeah. I'm like, okay. I think I, I've told this story before, but uh, I, it's one of my favorites. Twins that I've known forever, and uh, they decided to go, they, they, so I've known these girls for a long time, uh, and their senior, this is several years ago, their senior portraits, and one of the twins uh, got with me, and the other one, her friend <laughs> had a friend that had a camera, yeah. and so her mom. Flack, friend with a camera. Yeah, so her mom, you know, and this person was up and coming, but not, you know. So they went out and took pictures. I took pictures of the first one. They went out and took their pictures. They came back. And the second one wasn't really happy with her pictures. And so she asked if I could just go ahead and shoot a few for her yearbook and stuff because they were not happy with any of them. All right, so I don't do that. So I do a whole a full blown session. For me, when I have that client who has cheaped out the first time, they understand they appreciate yeah. the process. Well that's and they're not like, man, that was quick because they don't care. They realize that that there's a difference, right? right? So, so we let's go, let's talk about that. We got to uh, wrap up here I know, really, I wanna, really I soon. This real go ahead, you hit your I, point. I'll skip mine. We, I, I don't do that. I do the I do the full boat with both of them. Yeah. Okay. And it, and they, it's like, so the mom asked the second one, okay, here's the first portfolio. Here's the second one, and she just told her mom. I heard this from the first one. She says, Mom, every single shot that Larry took was on point. <laughs> I don't need to look. And that feels great, right? Yeah. So there's a, you know, let me introduce you to professional photography, yeah. right? So are uh, you listening? Are you listening when they're not talking to you? Oh yeah. 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 I, I'm learning a lot listening. I've had people say, intently. don't don't you need one of those reflector things? Hmm. I said, well, I, no. I have one. Do you want me? To, <laughs> do you want me to go get you it? You want to hold it? Yeah. <laughs> yes. But, but hey, look, yeah. we got to wrap we this wrap topic. Uh, man, that was fast. Yeah, expertise. <laughs> expertise is the answer to this question. This man, this was fast. Expertise so. and and honing your process. We don't have expertise in doing live because that's how come we just chatter on and don't have a. Well, we don't get it done. Here, quick. here we are. Yeah. Um, so then I'm going to check that guy off, but I want to come back up to Boop Badoo. This guy here. Yeah. Perfect. Next week's live, and it's changed a little bit just while we've been on because I'm watching the messages stack up on my phone. Um, we're going to have a different team in front of the camera next week. It's going to be awesome. And they're going to be discussing, tune in here for a minute. Uh, Jen, I hope I get this right for you. I should just pull up her text message and read it. She wants to talk about fear and judgment and the things that hold you back from pursuing an advance in your skills and in your professionalism. Yep. Um, fear of judgment. Yeah is one reason I think people don't come into a professional organization because oh, they don't want to show what they don't know. Yeah, it's huge. And and especially when you're when you know you come up and, and against it's se real against seasoned pros and you're like uh, my stuff doesn't even look close to that. You know what? I've got a quick anecdote on this. I've got a quick story about this. Um, I coached uh, youth volleyball this summer for my son. We've talked a lot about that. 
uh, for the YMCA. And it was fun, and it was sweaty and hot. Um, but I realized at the end of that that I am not capable of continuing to coach my 15-year-old because his skill set has yeah. grown beyond mine. And we just found a, a, a boys' volleyball club here in the Valley that's 12 to 18 and up into the early 19s, right? Um, they are competitive, they are talented, they are coached by a professional, and frankly, I'm paying out the nose to get him <laughs> into this program. Okay, the Y was like 75 bucks. This is a thousand bucks for his first season with these people. We went to a practice uh, the other night and it was absolutely flat out, nothing short of astounding watching these kids and the coach play. I knew, I knew I wasn't capable of coaching him further. But what else did you and know? That it's expensive to get him into volleyball. No, what did no, I know? Well, you, j I need to just, hire a professional. Yeah, but yeah, exactly. It's just like, let me introduce you to professional yeah. photography. That's let the same reason why you should, coaching. that's what, if, for those of you that don't raise your prices, this is what Bob's talking about. It, took, it cost him a fortune to get it in there, but people have money to do what they want to do. Yeah. Don't, don't do that. And that's the reason, he just hit on it. It cost you a bunch of money, but what was the it's result? It's absolutely worth it to exactly. me to see my kid. Okay, so my kid got spiked on pretty hard. My kid doesn't even know how to spike. I can't show him how to spike. Yeah. I have no vertical yeah, leap, yeah. okay? Like me, five foot nothing. Right. Yeah. Here's son, how's how you, here's how you spike, theoretically, because yeah. I can't demonstrate this for you. Okay, are you laughing at us? Because this shit's funny, right? In theory. Uh, in theory. Here's how you spike. Um, Laquita yeah. says, oh, I definitely need to hear that show. I think that was a few subjects back, but uh, thanks, Laquita. Um, <laughs> we got to wrap it up. Yeah. I'm just having fun with this. Um, it is really, oh, I was going to say, he got spiked on, and then, and then he did a, the next serve, he did a, this dive into the, just dive and he actually dug the ball out. Dug the ball out and put it back in play and they played and they and they got the point. And he came across that net when it was time to rotate and his smile was so huge. He's not smiling for me. He's not smiling for anybody there. He just couldn't help but smile. Yeah. I'm like, I'm sold. I'm yeah. here. Uh, fell in love quickly with the coach and his his family and just like, it was just awesome. Just like a client seeing their images for the first time. Yeah. I love that. I love yeah. that because you, you know, when, I know now, know enough now that I know when I hit it out of the park and it's just so awesome to have them look at that and the, their reaction is just priceless. So, yeah. Good stuff. Folks, don't, uh, don't miss next week's live episode. It's going to be right here on YouTube. I think it's going to be called Fear and Judgment. I haven't titled it yet, but I think that's what we're going to call it. And uh, I do think that Jen Alvey, our president, is going to lead that conversation. That's going to be awesome. And I know she's asked uh, another lady to be her co-host. I'm so excited for this. And you know what I get to do? Run them. I get to run the production yeah. from the other side of the camera. I'm stoked. First opportunity to do that because I'm usually trying to do it while we're here. Um, the last thing I want to hit on, we're going to close out right here at noon. Um, we are a membership organization. We are professional photographers of Idaho. We represent professional photographers at all levels from the aspiring professional through the many many years of being a seasoned pro yep and it is that range that gives us the value that we offer to our members so tell them a little bit about how they can get on board yeah so ppofidaho.com there's a big join us button uh, right there that you can't miss it so but we have a, a way to be a member and go to our fall retreat. Oh, all in the same. Tell them, Larry. Yeah, you just <laughs> listen. A regular membership is ninety nine dollars a year, or nine ninety nine a month if you want to pay it that way. We have a special though. If you want to be a member, such P a deal. PPI, and you want to go to our fall retreat, you can combine those two, and uh, we have a special price for you right there on the website. So if right below that join, if you go up to the events tab, hit that, go down to fall retreat, you can see the price right there pay that fee, it's half price basically awesome. what it is for awesome. the membership. So it's half price for membership, you get to the membership, you get to come in and hang out with us in uh, Tetonia, and uh, we're gonna have fun. Guys, this is, this is, is, you're gonna get your learn on and you're gonna have a good time and uh, you know, we're gonna 
cement some new friendships and relationships there so it'll be awesome yeah folks thanks for being with us today this was a lot of fun this is a topic yeah. that i'm super um pleased to be able to bring to our viewership and uh, don't miss next week when we talk fear and judgment and it's going to be jen alvey and a new co-host and um you don't want to miss that that's no, gonna be great. i'm no. so excited I for that learn i'm too. not gonna miss it so, all right yeah good stuff see you soon have a good weekend that was the wrong button larry here we go have a great weekend. Have a good weekend. <laughs>